Hey there, knife lovers and YouTube subscribers to the LTK channel. Uh, I am excited because I like Ganzo knives. I really do. And you've seen my reviews on them. It's like a freaking broken record. I'm sorry. There's just so many different models to look at, and they're really good. I can't remember who got me started on this stuff, but these are great knives. Well, okay, let's, let's start. These are great knives. I mean, this is what it started on was the Arc Lock series with the piston lock, Arc Lock, piston lock, whatever you want to call it. You know, and they're great one-handed. They're fun to kind of play with as, you know, because they flip in and out just like real easy. Eh, there you go. Lock right up. Pull it right back. Spring loaded, right? I mean, not assisted opening. Okay, spring here. Okay. Any case, let's get that out of the way. I got hooked on them. I mean, the 720, the 727, you know, all different models are so cool. <clears throat> So, I ordered these. I ordered one that was green and one that was orange. The model G7522. And, of course, OR for orange. And guess what I got? Well, I got two orange ones. I didn't get a green one. The guy was out of green, so he goes, sorry, I'm sending you two orange ones. And, you know, it's kind of like, well, you know, if I'm going <laughs> to... If I ordered two, like, red, I mean, a red Mercedes and a blue Mercedes, I don't want two red Mercedes, okay? Just saying. Well, not that these are Mercedes by any stretch of the imagination, but in any case, you see what I'm saying. There's no point in getting two of these, except now one's going to get sold, probably. But <clears throat> here we go. Frame lock flipper. Go figure, right, Ganzo? Hmm. I mean, they're doing the arc lock. They got the liner lock stuff. They got, you know, whatever. But frame lock flipper, stone wash, right? The blue uh, highlighted components. One guy says, oh, these are flame, flame colored. You know, they flame them and that colors them. Another guy going, I think it's a, a, a dye that, you know, you use for metal products. Whatever it is, it's blue. See, it looks like it's almost heat flamed because of the different coloration here. And you've seen things when they get really hot, they turn these different kind of purplish colors. So I don't know. In any case, I've never researched that. Not too concerned about it. We got the 752 model number there and 440C. And here it says Firebird. They got the Firebird emblem. Look at these fullers. These are, you know, I... The, it was, yeah, I like flippers. Okay, I like frame lock flippers. Uh, I'm not sure I like frame lock flippers that are budget knife frame lock flippers because <laughs> it scares me. Uh, but I thought I'd give it a shot. You can see the lock up here. It's pretty heavy. It's over 50%. Okay, let's, let's do this. Let's get this other one out. Let's compare two different knives. Came from the same seller. Okay, but I mean, they're not, they're not different models, all right? They're the same deal. And it comes with the, I'm sorry, comes a little plastic thing, comes with this felt pouch, drawstring pouch, which is, it's not, it's not the kind of pouch you would get at a jewelry store when you buy your wife a diamond ring or something. Uh, that is velvet, and this is definitely not. But it's, it's kind of nice they throw that in. So let's get over that idea. Ganzo. Oh, we didn't throw the label right over the, the logo. Half of them are like that. In any case, so now we got this one too. They both flip. Let's look at the lockup. That's real heavy too. That's way over 50%, isn't it? And see, okay, here's the deal with these before we get too far. See the scale that separates out? Because the scale is on here, right? And I had another knife, the piston knife. You can look at that. It was a higher end, you know, titanium flipper knife. But this, the, it had carbon fiber and it did the same thing. It, it separates here because you can't follow this liner when it moves like that. Not unless, you know, you separate the whole thing. And I guess they didn't want to do that. That is probably why, hello, most of the knives that you see that are frame locks they don't have G10 on the back. 
they're just standard stuff here. It's just metal, okay? Because you're going to have to separate this and then it comes together up here. But <clears throat> why you put G10 on the back of this, I don't know. I mean, it is a little dressier and all that, but I'm not sure I get this, you know? Is this going to be okay over time? I don't know. I guess I'll find out. I don't usually abuse my knives heavily, so, but I, you know, if, I don't know how you do that, but it's, it might possibly uh, happen that you could get something jammed in here and, you know, tear that away. I don't know. I, I don't see it happening in my world, but maybe it's possible. Okay, so it's one-handed. They flip. I wasn't too happy with these when they came out of the box. Um, this one's a lot lighter as far as the detent goes. I could tell that right away. Look at this. There you go. Gravity flip. I mean, I didn't, I didn't flip it. Okay. Comes right out. This one is really different. <sighs> no, maybe I can do it like this. Okay. So you really got to slam this baby to get it to gravity come. So I, 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 uh, they're very different on the detent. Really strange. Okay. So in here, and I, I don't know that I've really looked all that close, but you've got, you've got a, a detent ball in there. Um, I'm looking for. It's got a little lock bar interface. It looks like, or they put a hole in there for it. I'm not sure that I'm seeing it. Let me get it out of here. No, no, okay, never mind. I had to bring it around my side of the camera. No, there's no interface in here. There's no insert in here for the contact, but this is steel. This is not titanium, so there's no point, okay? But you do have your uh, little detent ball in there for what it's worth. And then this one, it's a lot uh, more detent and there's a lot more. Mm, it, it's, uh, it, it feels like it's in contact with the bushings. I'll guarantee you there's not bearings in there. And I'll tell you another thing, folks. I tried, because they didn't flip all that well out of the box, I tried to loosen these pivots and I could not turn them. They are Loctited down harder than nails. I mean, I basically stripped the inside of this out um, <clears throat> with my uh, torque wrench. It's, it was amazing. So I said, okay, I'll give up. They're like, I, I paid $27 a piece for them. Okay. So that's not terribly expensive when you're thinking about, you know, this, this one I think was like 20 or 22 Okay. So it depends on how much you like frame lock flippers. I mean, one of my viewers, before I got these, he said, I'm not really that happy with this uh, model, which I keep forgetting, but in any case, 752. Uh, he said, first of all, um, I don't think they flip that well. And second of all, this... Uh, you have to, because the lock bar is right there. I mean, you got to get your finger right there close to release, right? But if you think about most of the time, actually, you can stand back. You can, you can go back a little bit with your thumb. You don't have to get right up there, okay? But if you really think of most flipper knives, hell, let me pull this out because let's, let's talk about that, <clears throat> that complaint. <clears throat> Okay, so here's my icebreaker. Awesome flipping, not awesome knife. Okay, so you flip this open. I'm I when I when I disengage that lock bar, I'm up against here. Okay, I mean I'm I'm not way back here. I mean you can, but I'm not. I mean just as a matter of, it's kind of I just naturally rest right in here, so I'm coming in contact with that. So. I mean, it, yeah, it doesn't really make that much difference. Uh, yeah, I kind of get what he's saying because you can't really go way back here because you're not, there's not a, back in here, there's not a contact point. You know, I mean, it's even, this the scale is. 
in any case. Let's go on down the road. Let's let's do some basic stats on these uh, knives. <clears throat> hey, they flip okay. I mean, hell, better than the Inland ELO one. At least the one I got, or the two I got. Okay, three and a half inch blade, basically just a tad over, and eight and a quarter overall. Okay, let's check. Uh, let's check what the blade stock is all about. Zero this baby out. <clears throat> I bet it's close to four, but no, it's not. It's a little over three. Let's check right there. Yeah, just a little over three, which is... Come on, let's get some inches in. Come on. Okay. Well, we just don't want to do inches, do we? Are we in inches now? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Point one two two. So let's just say they're both the exact same <laughs> dimensions. Uh, yes, they are, of course. Okay. Really different flipping action between these two. It's really strange. This one's got a really a, a more robust detent. This one, not so much. But this one kind of floats a little freer, doesn't it? I mean, uh, why am I asking you? You don't know. Yeah. It's, it's good. It's not bad. I mean, it's, you know, it's almost, it's almost better that way. This one, whew, let's, let's get this baby past the detent. There we go. And yeah, this is not just falling into the handle by any means. You know, and, and I bitched and complained on the inland, right? I, I bitched and complained on this. Let's throw this out. Okay. It, yeah, it opens, but it, uh, you know, in a lot of times you kind of just find yourself helping it with wrist action. Okay. And then there was a, a guy who made a comment on that video of that knife and he said, okay. And your point is, I mean, he goes, why do I care? If I have, if I have to put a little wrist action in it, it's okay. You know, it's okay. And okay, I get that. <clears throat> I get it. And you know what? These did not... I I sprayed under pressure some lube in there. And I've worked with these for a day now. So I've, you know, I will get the lube in there. And I'm going and I'm even giving a little sideways action. And I'm really... And then I'm, I'm doing a lot of flipping. A lot of flipping on them. You know, a couple hundred maybe. You know, over time. Just, you know, because they're going to... These are not bearings in here, I, I am guessing. Um, and if you can look in there, see? Those are bronze. That's a bronze washer. What's on the other side? Uh, I think that's a bronze washer too. And maybe you can enlighten me if you've taken one of these apart. But what I'm seeing there is a bronze washer there. What I'm seeing there is I can't I can't see that well to what that is on that side. Let's take a look on this one. But they're not on bearings. That I mean that side, I mean it's scary because I've had Ganzos apart before and it's a and it's a, a, a nylon bushing on one side and the bronze on the other. And since I can't see the bronze on the other, I'm wondering if this is the same. It's a nylon bushing on one side and bronze on the other. So there you go. I mean, that's the way they are here, okay, on on just the arc lock ones, okay? So, that may be the way these are too. They're on bushings, they're not on bearings, and you can definitely tell the difference, and I do prefer bearings to bushings. But, they still flip reasonably well, and what I do like about these knives is I like the fact that you can carry them either tip up or tip down. You can't do left hand, I get that. But it's a frame lock flipper. I love the blue hardware on here. It'd have been nice to show you a green one. Accidentally, I ordered, <laughs> I got one from GearBest. I, I forgot about the one from GearBest because it's taken so long to come. And, and I got the same model number and I hadn't remembered that I'd ordered the same model number. So I ordered a green and an orange, got two orange, but I got a green one coming in from GearBest. 
So go figure. God only knows when that'll... You can't even track those things. That's crazy. But these came off a of DH gate. 27 bucks a piece. It's like... <sighs> yeah. It's not bad. It's the upper end of the Ganzo uh, deal. 752, 440C. Nice blue uh, detail here. I like the contrast, at least, for what it is. I like the fuller. I like this blade design. You still have a lot of meat up here for piercing tasks. You got a nice stone wash on here. And they're pretty sharp. Um, from what I can... I've, I haven't tried to cut a piece of paper yet with them, but... Um, wow, well, that didn't impress me. Okay, that's better. Okay. Okay. That's a real thin little cut, isn't it? Real thin ribbons. So, okay. So if you know how to cut paper, these will cut paper. I've never been known for uh, being very good with that. But yes, they're sharp. 440C, steel. Nice pocket clip, and it doesn't get into the way, and this does go in the pocket. I tried that uh, pretty well. Holds on good, not overly tight, and kind of more bordering on a deep pocket carry. Um, not really, or else it'd be positioned a little higher, but it's, it's getting there. Uh, the backspacer, it matches the G10. It, it's cool, and I like this. I like the design of this knife. This might be one I, I, I could carry, you know, uh, as opposed to the carbon fiber one, which I carry a lot. Um, <clears throat> I might rotate this one in, because, you know, it, it, it's really flipping a lot better now. I don't want to overstate saying, oh, this is an awesome flipper. Because when you get it, you may not have that experience. These two knives are so different uh, in the way that they feel. Uh, this one is almost, you can fail this because that detent is so weak. Look at that. I mean, you just touch this thing and you pushed it out of the detent. That's not easy to do on most flippers this one has a lot tougher detent and it can fail i mean i'm not saying these are the greatest flippers you got to follow it down when you flip it you got to follow it down you got to be more positive just like the inland that's also on washers you got to be more positive with it this is a great design too i like this knife but I just I, I'm, I'm a little funky about about a budget knife that's a flipper you know and this one of course they made it a liner lock which kind of makes more sense to me i mean i do like frame locks okay i get that but if you're going to put g10 on both sides because on this one they put wood on both sides right if you put g10 on both sides you ought to make it into a liner lock actually i think it makes more sense than to have this the scale sticking out here. I don't know. Maybe from a marketing standpoint, and maybe because there are a lot of people that really like flame lock, frame lock flippers. Not flame lock. Oh, God. Um, but, you know, the fit, fit and finish is always good on these. I mean, they, they feel nice and smooth and rounded. I mean, it's got a nice lanyard hole there. Let's check on the inside see yeah so it it goes right through the backspacer so that's cool so it's an enclosed lanyard hole not just an open one good is that focused yeah that's focused okay so you know you got your detent ball you got a frame lock flipper three and a half inch blade eight and a quarter overall half inch thick or if we ever measured that four millimeter uh 11.68 millimeters okay 0.46 not quite a half inch okay so 440c steel it's a pretty handsome knife i i can't remember if they've got one of these in carbon fiber if they don't probably one coming out god only knows but yeah i i like it i do like a flipper uh as opposed to uh Thumb stud only. Can you use a thumb stud on this? Yeah, you can. It's really easy to. Yeah. How about this one? Yeah, a lot easier on this one because the detent's a lot weaker. So this one, 
No problem. I can't. I, my thumb's just not long enough to. You can flick it if you got a long enough thumb. Yeah, see? So, yeah. So you can just use that. Or you can flip it. Either way. Kind of got the fuller here on both sides. I like that. Is that a blood groove? I don't know. But yeah, they work good. So let's let's just say that it's a budget flipper. It's they're nice. They're okay. Uh, they're sharp. They're very usable. You got the stone wash finish. You got the nice blue accents on it. You got a sturdy G10, very usable handle with with you know it's got texturing on it. Some very light, and you're not seeing that, are you? Okay, now you can see. You know, see the light texturing? Really light texturing there. Um, but it, it, it's, it's enough to, you can kind of get a grip on it. Um, it's, it's comfortable in the hand. You know, the reason, part of the reason that this design appeals to me, you see the canoe type pattern here? You got up here and up here. I like that. Uh, I, I think it fits really comfortably in the hand because of that. And you got this little flipper tab as a guard here. You got the jimping on the top. I mean, it's a good usable knife. And if it fails a little bit in the flipping department of being like one of your fidget, favorite fidget flippers, you know how that goes. Maybe not, won't be that. But it's really going to be a good a uh, fun carry knife and yeah you could uh, yeah you could just mess with it and flip it it's it's doing okay uh, so out of the box do not despair uh shoot some lube under pressure in there or whatever and work with it work with it over a period of time it'll loosen up i mean there's a lot of knives that are kind of a little funky out of the box a little tight uh not real responsive uh this is kind of how it goes sometimes but it, you know, once it's broken, I mean, maybe there's nothing wrong with that. It just tells you that the knife, you know, needs to be used. And the more you use it, the better it gets, the more responsive it is. That's fine, you know. Uh, these are good budget knives. I mean, 27 bucks, what? You know, I had a, a No Time Off CRKT uh, and that had IKBS in it and that flipped really well. And I think I, I got it pretty cheap at $50. I think the MSRP was like $99 from CRKT. Check it out. That's a really good knife. If you, if you want a nice little real user, tough guy, a little flipper, that's a great knife. And you might be able to pick one up for 50 bucks. I think mostly they're going for like 60 or so. So you're talking about this is less than half the price. Okay, so, and it's a frame block flipper. That one had a different type of lock system on it, uh, the, the no time off, but it's a really cool design. It's a great knife. I had it. I sold it. Get money back to buy more knives. But these, uh, yeah, these are good flippers. I mean, you got to think of the price point on these. Okay, so you got stainless steel. Yeah, I get that. You got uh, 440. It's not exotic, you know. So everything here, I'm sorry. You know, yeah, that's steel. This is not titanium stuff. This is all stainless steel. But it's 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 good stuff. You know, it's solid. It's stone washed. The fit and finish is good. It's ah, if they would have just thrown a couple ball bearing uh, rings on there, one on each side, this thing would be outstanding. But uh, as it is, it's it's okay. And you know, I guess you got to consider price. And uh, cost of machining the the areas for the races and stuff like that on the on the ball bearing deal, but uh, and I couldn't get these open anyhow. Uh, they are Loctited down so tough, and I came from the backside here with a, a Torx a number eight, and I mean it just absolutely. And I don't know if you can see that very well. It's starting to booger up here uh, to where my Torx was starting to actually turn on its own. Look at how it's, I mean, it's reduced my, the tip of my Torx wrench to uh, damn near to garbage. Uh, it made it tough. And you know, it's still getting a little bit, but oh my God, 
I, I and I don't want to do this because I'm going to rip this out and they're okay the way it is. But you almost have to put that on an, you know, a, this, uh, if you have bits like this, maybe you could put on the end of an impact wrench. I mean, an impact driver. You're almost going to have to do that to, to break this free. I don't know how you do it. And I just don't want to tear it up anymore. Leave it some, some grip there with the Torx. And maybe I could heat it or you could put penetrating oil. But right now, I just don't see the point anyhow. They've kind of loosened up on their own to where they're flipping a lot better now. So, nah, I, 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 even if I could, I don't think there's any point in getting into them. They're adequate. They're adequate flippers. They're, they're, the action's pretty, pretty good right now and seems to get better. This one's a little light on the detent, you know, uh, but it, you know, but it's okay. It's, it's interesting to see the differences because if you could feel that, this detent is much tougher than this one is. And it's kind of strange that they're so different. But they both flip well, as you can see. And if you like this design, um, yeah, these are these are cool knives. I mean, it's nice to have a frame lock flipper for uh, 27 bucks. And it and, and I really like the look, the, the basic design of this knife appeals to me. And it's a big enough knife to use for a lot of things. And there's no rough edges, so it's very smooth. And I've gone way over time. Uh, just thought maybe you'd be interested in seeing these. There's probably not a lot of videos out on these right now because they're fairly new in the in the Ganzo lineup. But I love Ganzo knives, and these are cool. I don't need two of them. I just need one of them. I probably don't need any of them. Actually, need and want are two different things, aren't they? But one of these will probably go. In any case, take care. I hope you enjoyed getting a little bit more information on these knives uh, because they are, they're interesting, uh, but you need to be aware of kind of how they are so that you uh, don't have unreal expectations when you get them. All right, take care. We've got more coming down the line. Thanks, guys.